All right, good morning, everybody. We're just gonna give everybody a few minutes to get connected in. I've just started the webinar, so it sometimes takes a couple of minutes while everybody gets connected. Uh, while you're connecting in, uh, if, if you feel like it, you can actually definitely put your uh, put where you're coming in from today. I like to know where I'm, people I'm talking to in the session. So uh, if you'd open up the little chat box, you can actually put in where, where you're coming in from today. We'll just give it another minute or so while the numbers kind of level out though, and then we'll get started with the session, so. Oh, and I see uh, Jolene from Maple Ridge, uh, Heather from Grand Prairie. Welcome, everybody. Greg from Calgary, uh, Felicity from Calgary. We've got another person from John from Grand Prairie. We've got Lisa from Cold Lake, Anna from Salt Spring. And we've got quite, quite a few people coming in from all over Western Canada. So, so we'll just start up in just one more minute here. Oh, and there's Trisha from Penticton, Aaron from Comox. Welcome, everybody. All right, so the numbers are starting to sta stabilize. I think we're probably good to start up here now. So uh, my name is Jeff Brass, for anybody who doesn't know me. Um, I am the uh, desktop support engineer here at Remax of Western Canada. Uh, not in the session today, but uh, Noel is also actually uh, in, in the training. He's actually heads up the training for Western Canada and actually all for all of Canada at this point. So I did want to mention him. Uh, he has been out on the road over the last few weeks giving training to people across Western Canada uh, since the launch of Bouge. Um, as of the 9th, we've actually now also uh, launched the websites as well. So at this point, you can use your websites. Uh, the website address that you previously had associated to your Lead Street website is now linked to your Bouge website. Uh, with the Bouge websites, though, it is something you have to actually publish. So I'm going to be taking through the process of actually how to publish your website. Um, that website address that I mentioned previously, that yourname.remax.ca, you do still have that. That is just now being brought over to your Lead Street or to your Bouge website. So you can start using that website. So. Um, I did also want to mention before we get too far into things, um, if you have any questions uh, after the session, you can definitely reach out to the product support team. They're there to help you guys out. We want to make sure you can use them as a resource. Uh, Tristan, who used to be part of our support team here at Remax Western Canada, has now been brought into that pro product support team. And in doing that, they've actually really extended the support hours. So if you have questions, uh, even if it's early in the morning or late in the evening, previously we had Tristan here 8 to 4.30 to, to answer any questions you might have. But now actually you can actually contact the product support anywhere between 6 a.m. and uh, I believe it's 9 p.m. Uh, uh, central time actually. So it's so a lot, lot wider range of times you can actually contact support. Um, you can actually reach out to them by clicking the support services tile within Mac Center, uh, or you can reach out to them by, by phone number or by text actually. That's something new for us as well at one 888 398-7171, or you can reach out to them also by email at product support at remax.net. So, so really use them as a resource. If you have questions, uh, if you run across little issues with Bouge when you're actually in there, uh, we realize that it is still a brand new platform. We're going to find little things we have to get fixed over time. So definitely report those over to the product support team and they're there to help you guys out. So, all right. So I'm going to now close off PowerPoint and we're going to jump right into the live website here. So uh, for anybody that wants to follow along, please feel free to do so. Um, if you have two, two monitors, of course, that's going to be easier because you can have my presentation up on one screen, have your Mac Center and your Bouge up on the other screen, and you can kind of be following along. And if you have questions, you can actually ask questions in the chat or the Q&A box within Zoom as well. So, all right, for anybody who does want to follow along, uh, we need to start by logging into our Mac Center account. And to get to Mac Center, you just open up your web browser and you go to www remax.net and that'll bring you to the Mac Center sign-in page that you see on my screen right here. From here, uh, you sign in using your remax.net email address as well as whatever password you set up when you initially set up your account. Uh, if it's been a while since you've been in the Mac Center and you're not sure what your password is, you can use this little forgot password option right here to reset your password. It would basically send you a reset link which would let you reset your password. Or failing that, uh, we do have the product support phone number right on this page here. So you can definitely call them and they'd be able to assist you with getting logged into your account. So, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna log into my Mac Center account here. And once we're logged in, we'll be brought right to our Mac Center dashboard page. 
And from here, we actually need to go on into Boosh. So we're using Max Center as a portal to get to Boosh in this case. Max Center is kind of our main portal to get to everything Remax. And you'll see right here, I do have a Boosh tile. If you don't find Boosh listed right here in your frequently used apps, then you might not because you haven't maybe used it a whole lot yet. Uh, you should be able to click this view all link to see all the other apps that you have access to. Or you can also click right over here where it says apps to, to see all those apps as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here as well, you want to actually look for this red Boosh tile. Uh, we're not going to be looking at this green Boosh tile right down here. This relates more to getting the listing feed set up for your office. So you, this isn't necessarily something you have to deal with. This is something your broker or office admin would have set up your listing feed for your, your particular office. So we are going to be looking at this little Boosh tile right here. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my Boosh account. And actually, I don't necessarily have my own Booge account. Actually, I'm using a test account today. And you can see it logged me directly into the test account. So you can see I'm in test agent 19. Uh, so you, when you log in, you'd have scored to log into your own agent account rather than to, into this test account. Uh, but it should be lit, less laid out in a similar fashion. Uh, you'd have access to all the different sections here that I have access to in the account that I'm in, in my test account. So first thing I want to look at right here is I want to go into this website section. And let's start by going into the domain manager. I want to show you this here. So for any of you that have your own domain that you've registered, that you've had linked to uh, maybe to your previous website, or maybe you registered yourname.com or something along those lines. And if you want to bring that over to your Bouge website, this is basically the instructions or, or the, the directions you need to be able to update with the company you registered your domain name with so that they can link that over to your Bouge website. And for anybody that wants to, uh, if you put something into the chat, just let me know. I can actually send you a little document that gives you the steps for linking your domain over to your Bouge website. Uh, we do still give you that yourname.remax.ca domain, but if you have your own third-party domain that you registered yourself, you can link that to your Bouge website as another way for people to get to that website as well. So, so again, if you put something into the chat, just to let me know that you're interested in me sending that document, I could definitely send that to you after the session is over. And essentially it's just a matter of, uh, let's say you've registered your domain name with, uh, let's say like GoDaddy, it's one of the more popular ones. Essentially it's just a matter of logging into the GoDaddy dashboard. And there's a section where you can update the DNS records. And this is actually the information you have to update in those DNS records to be able to have that link over to your Bouge website. Uh, but again, if you want, uh, if you send me just a message in the chat, just let me know that you're interested in that document. I'd be more than happy to send that to you after, after the session's over here as well. So, all right, so that is our domain manager. Uh, so essentially, yeah, you update these settings on the side of your registrar, the company you registered that domain name with. And then after you've done that registration process on that side of your, your registrar, the last step is to come right here and then just type in the domain that you've actually linked. So it kind of does the handshake in between the Boosh system and your registrar to get everything linked over properly. So, all right, so uh, let's, let's now go into the dashboard page. So I'm gonna go into the website section again. And right here, I'm gonna go into the dashboard. And what you'll notice here, you'll probably find that yours, your website is, is not published yet. You do have to go and actually publish that website for people to be able to start accessing it. Before it's published, um, if somebody were to try and land on that website, it's basically going to take them to a, a username and password where they have to enter those login credentials to be able to see the website. But after you publish it, it takes away that so that people can go and actually see that website. And what you'll find here as well, you'll find that the address of your website, it would be very similar to the address, if, if not identical, the address you had for your Lead Street website. Uh, it's typically it, it's based on whatever your remax.net email address is. So let's say you have Joe Smith dot or sorry at remax.net essentially that translates into your website address being joe smith and then dot remax.ca so we take off the at remax.net portion of that address and replace that with dot remax.ca uh, the one exception to that is if you had uh if your if your remax.net email address was first name dot last name or first initial dot last name or something like that where you have a dot in between the first and last name uh, we do actually replace that dot with a hyphen so let's say you have joe dot smith at remax.net address that that basically means that that's going to translate into joe uh, hyphen smith dot remax.ca 
So hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you will technically still have that address. So if you if you actually have advertised that Joe.smith dot remax dot ca is your website address that will still forward to your actual website address but when it forwards through it's going to be taking you to joe hyphen smith dot remax dot ca so at least for that that website address we provided but uh, again if you have your own domain name if you link that to your website and that's what you use in your advertising if you link that to your booge website then that will bring you directly to that website and that's the address that people will see in the address bar so. So you can see right here, um, I do have uh, a website here, which is actually published at this point. And you would hopefully have something very similar. You just might not have it published quite yet. And what you can do here, just to have a look at the website before you get to go too far into things, you can actually click on this address and it will bring up the website in its current form. And if you haven't published the website yet, if it was still showing as unpublished on that previous page, what it likely is gonna do is it's gonna ask you for a username and password. And the username, um, if, if that's the case, it's going to be the username is Booj, B-O-O-J, and then password is W-C-A-N. But as soon as you publish this, so if this was unpublished and I published this, then that's available to the public. And that means then from then on, you can actually click that link to see that website without having to put in a username and password. You can see we do have a, a kind of a basic setup right here. Uh, this website... Uh, template that we're using right here does have a search bar right here where we can search for listings from our area or depending on what listing feed your office is actually added for your office uh, you might even find listings from outside your area as well so, so you can see we have kind of a, a nice big image here a nice big background image and this is something as well that we we didn't have previously with the lead street websites um, with this big background image we do provide some, some pre-loaded images that you can use for your background, but you actually now actually have the ability to load your own image and use that as your background as well. So that's something that is brand new with Booj. Uh, we know that a lot of people have been asking that for a number of years with the Lead Street websites, and that is something we now have with the Booj websites. You can take your own image, you can load it in, and you can actually use that as your background image for your website. So uh, the one thing with that is if you are going to be loading your own image, you want to make sure that you're using your own image or, or an image that you have the rights to use online. Uh, you can't just go and Google your, your city and just take an image from the internet because that, that's likely something that's licensed to somebody and they, they want to be able to be paid for that. So, so you can see we do have a nice big image right here. Uh, we have a search bar where we can search for listings. Uh, here's actually a little section where we have an image with a little bit of text overlaid on it. Uh, this particular layout actually includes a little blog where you can actually have it pull in uh, blog information from another website. And then right down here, we even have an actual video that plays right on this website. And what, what you have to know with these websites as well, uh, everything is actually built in blocks on these pages. So you can actually rearrange, you can add and remove content in blocks of, of sections of the website. So, so that's the look we have right now. Scroll down here. Uh, there's there's actually an extra thing right here, which I have to see what that is there. But you can go and edit this. You can change the the layout by choosing a different actual layout for the home page, or you can actually go and just edit the page to be whatever you want it to be as well. So if we wanted to edit the home page in this case, I'm just going to hit Edit Agent Search Layout, and you can see it actually brings up the blocks that we have on the website so we can start rearranging them or removing or adding to them as well. So you can see right here, uh, headline is this, this kind of this top area of the page. We do have an, a hero image, which is actually this image right here with some text overlaid on it. Uh, there's a blog section right here, which is actually this section right down here. Uh, we have a listing block. So if we have any listings that are associated to our account, those listings will automatically appear in this little block. Uh, otherwise, that block is actually hidden if you don't have any listings that are actually associated to you. Uh, right down here, we have a video gallery, which is actually the video section. And then there's one more. There's actually a video. Let's see here. I'm just going to remove this one temporarily because that one's actually hidden anyways. And then right down here, if you actually have 
Uh, if you're actually signed up with Rank My Agent and you have reviews with Rank My Agent, you can even add this Rank My Agent block so that it'll automatically pull in your reviews. Uh, we do have an alternative to that as well. If you're not signed up with Rank My Agent or you're not using Rank My Agent, you can go and manually add reviews into a review section of your account. And then it's just a matter of adding a block that will show those reviews. Let's say we wanted to add one more block here that showed those reviews. I'm just going to click Add Block right here. And you can see these are the different types of blocks of content that we can add. And right over here, there is a testimonials. So if I click on that, you can see now that I've added the testimonials block, it's pulling in those reviews that I've previously added to my account. So as you go and actually add more reviews into your account, as you get those reviews from your previous clients, you can just manually add them into the review section that, so that they show up in this block. But again, if you actually are maybe using the Rank My Agent system, you can add that Rank My Agent block right here. Let's just edit this one here. So right now, this Rank My Agent isn't connected to Rank My Agent, but we can connect that just by clicking this little connect button. If we have an account with Rank My Agent, it will connect and it will then start pulling in your reviews automatically for us. So, oh, and a question there, uh, reviews will at one day pull any Google reviews, agent reviews. Uh, I don't know if that's on the, on the plans for Bouge at this point. Uh, we, we do kind of focus more on Rank My Agent and using the internal review system, but suggestions like that, we can always take those to the development team and see if that's something they'd be willing to add over time. Uh, but at this point, we don't automatically pull in Google agent reviews. Uh, it would be a matter of you adding that, that reviews block, and then you could just manually copy and paste those reviews from Google into the review section in your system. So. But great, great question. Thank you very much, Richard. All right, so let me just show you a couple things here. So what we have, we have these different blocks that we have down the page. Uh, you can rearrange these in any way you'd like. Let's say we wanted to have the video before the listing block. You can just basically click and drag that. And then once we save that, that would update on the website. And that's what you'd actually see at that point. So you can see that we've actually moved the listing block up and it now shows up over here. Uh, we can add or remove anything we want here. Let's say we wanted to maybe put in a, a new hero block, hero image block. So let me just remove this section right here. And I'm gonna add a block. And we have, again, we have a few different options here. We have a hero image, we have an image and text gallery, we have image and text, uh, we have a video gallery. So let's actually add this hero image. And then it's really just a matter of, of pulling in, loading in the content that we want to show in that block. So right here, we can click to choose an image. Uh, we do have some images that are preloaded. So we have images for a lot of different areas around Western Canada. Uh, let's say we're in Tofino, we wanna actually advertise that. So I can choose this Tofino image. I can insert that. And then it gives you a preview of what that image will actually look like. Uh, you can then add a title, which will show over top of that image. So let's say put Tofino in there, and then we can put in a little bit of text that will show right below that right here. So very easy to go and add content. Um, very nice layout. You can actually have those images with text overlaying it, which is something that we have new to Bouge, which we didn't previously have with, with Leadtree as well. Oh, and a question. Yes, please send a link to Realtor. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Andrew. I, I will send you that link to that document that I mentioned previously as well. So uh, the other thing, too, uh, we can add things like video to our website using just a, a video block. So let's say we didn't have this video gallery and we wanted to add that. Just have to remove that for now. And then I'm going to add another block again. Uh, this time I'm going to add a video. So I'm gonna go click right here for video. And what, what we can do with the video here, we basically just have to find a link to the video that's hosted on another system. So uh, if you have videos that you've hosted on YouTube uh, or Wistia or Vimeo, it does mention what which system we support. Uh, it's really just a matter of taking the link to that video Paste it in here, pasting it in here so that we can actually display that video right on the website. So let's just go and quickly find a, a YouTube video. And we do have some in our Remax of Western Canada channel that will probably work for this scenario. So let's just go and find one of those. There's our channel right there. And we have a few fairly short little videos that probably would work for this scenario. So let's just go and- Welcome to your new home, guys. We couldn't have done it without you. Seriously. Seriously. Right? Right here. Yes. So 
it's a nice Welcome short video. That's probably a good option for us. Uh, something that length, or even sometimes even shorter, uh, is usually a good length of video to have on your website because people aren't going to necessarily just going to sit there and watch a multi-minute video. So we're going to take this video. I'm just going to take the address of this video right here. I'm going to go back into Bouge. Uh, we're going to give this a title. So let's just call this uh, uh, current ad campaign. like that. And then we basically just have to paste in the link for the video right here. And now if I save that, you can see we have this video block right down here, which we can then basically drag up to whatever section of the page we want it to show in. And now we're just going to do the full preview and see if that video is showing up for us. So there's our video right there. Um, this would be the same process if you actually want to load your own video. You can go and sign up for a free, uh, a free uh, YouTube account. You can upload your video into that. And if you do that, if you actually take your own video and upload it to your own YouTube account and then load that video into your website, that's really unique video content or unique content for your website, which is going to help improve the SEO of your website, the search engine optimization. Uh, uh, Google, Yahoo, all those different search providers do like to see unique content and content that's relevant to your business. So if you're taking your own videos and you're loading it into your website, that's really going to help your website come up higher and higher in the search rankings over time. So you can see right here, we do have this video that shows right Welcome here. Welcome to your new home, guys. We couldn't have done it without you. Seriously. Seriously. And the other thing too, video is more attractive to a consumer when they land on your website than than blocks of text or images because it's something that's more much more engaging really so, so you can see we have that video right there uh, so essentially we've built a very simple home page at this point so you can see we have our search right up here uh, we have our blog this is where our listing would be showing uh, right here is where the rank my agent reviews would be appearing if we had those reviews connected to our account and right here we also have our testimonials where we can see those testimonials that we have in our account as well and then we have a, uh, a hero image right there with some text. And then right at the bottom of the page, we have this video as well. So, so that's essentially how you create your page. Um, it's really a blank slate. You can take off anything that's not going to be useful for you. You can add things that, that are relevant to you and relevant to your business. And that's, that's really going to be how you build the pages for your website. So we've kind of been working on the home page so far. Uh, the other thing you can do here, you can go and build your own pages from scratch as well. Uh, you'll find on the website, when you go to the public website, there's going to be a little menu button up here. And you can add links to other pages in your account. Oh, I see a question from Jolene. Can't see any changes on the preview. Does it take time to load? Uh, it's usually pretty pretty quick, actually. When you when you go and make changes, as long as you save the page, you should see those almost in real time. Uh, may take an extra minute or so. We have had a couple of issues with, with one of our, our uh, providers just today. Uh, so that could be slowing things down a little bit. But hopefully within a few minutes, we'll see those changes that you're making to your site. So. All right, so let's go through the process of how to go and create uh, create our own page for the, the website. So, so let's just go back here. I'm going to exit this. And we were on this dashboard. So let's go in and actually view the pages section. So right over here, there's a view pages. And you can see all the different pages that we've actually built uh, for this this. Uh, this test account over the last little while here. Uh, what I want to do though, I want to show you how to build your own. Uh, let's let's actually build a local resources or a local suppliers page. So you can see right at the top of this page where all the other pages are, there is an add page button. And we can go and create a, a brand new page just from scratch. So let's go and do that. Let's create a new page. Let's call it local suppliers. Just have to spell correctly. There we go. Uh, description, that's really just information for you. So you don't necessarily have to fill in a description right here. I'm just going to click save. And it starts, it brings you back into the block editor again, where you can start adding information for this page. So let's start with a hero image. Let's choose an image here. And let's just see what we have. Well, let's actually use one of the standard images for today. So let's uh, say here's here's Vancouver Island. Let's actually use that for today. I'm going to insert that image. We're going to give this page a title. So we're going to call it local suppliers again. Local suppliers. 
uh, description. This is actually going to display here so that you can actually give it a little bit more information about what kind of content you'll find on this page. Uh, let's just say something about check out these local resources for Vancouver Island. Like that. And didn't spell that right. There we go. So we have that first block, we have the hero image. I'm just going to save that now. And then it's just a matter of just kind of working down the page, adding your content. So we have our hero image with a bit of text on it. Let's add another block here now. So let's actually just add a, a standard text block. And in this text block, we can start adding in the content that people will save on the, we'll see on the page. So we could actually add a few different, maybe a few different suppliers or, or, uh, or, or resources that relate to, to the real estate industry. So let's say we have, those movers. These mortgage brokers, something along those lines. And what you can also do here, these are at, this is actually raw text right now, but you can turn this into links to other websites. And in doing that, that's actually letting you be seen as a, a resource of information for your area as well. So if you're linking to, to businesses that relate to the real estate business, uh, your website starts being seen as a, a resource of information for your area. So just by doing this, this is also helping the SEO of your website. Um, if you can also go one step further, and if you're linking to a, a local moving company, if you can actually talk to them and ask them to link back to your website as well, that's what we call backlinking. And that's really powerful for SEO as well. It actually helps improve the credibility of both your website and their website by having those links back and forth. So if we wanna add a link here to Joe's Movers, let's just, uh, just do this. We're gonna create a link right here and let's just find a moving company to link to here. Find a Kelowna moving company here. I want to work right there. So I'm just going to take the address of this website right here. I'm going to go back to our website. I'm going to put in the URL that we're linking to. And then we're going to give this a little title so that that means whenever anybody mouses over this text, it's the title that pops up in the window. So let's do that. Let's call this Joe's Hers, just like that. And the other thing you can do here as well, when you're actually creating a link on a website, you can tell it that when somebody clicks that link, whether you wanted to open in the current window that you're in in your browser or in a new tab. Uh, usually I recommend doing the new window if you're linking to a website that's outside of your website, because that way when somebody clicks that link, they open up the new tab, they look at that website, and then once they're done with that website, when they close that tab, it brings them right back to the website that brought them there in the first place. So. Oh, and a question from Heather, uh, as ad blocks, they're not saving in the order I want them in. Am I missing a save option? Uh, it should just be a, a matter of clicking and dragging. You might find that after you, after you close the page, you'll actually see those updated, uh, that those updates to the page. Uh, you just might not see it necessarily in the editor while you're editing that, that page itself though. Does that make sense, Heather? And, and if that, that is, if you're actually running into issues where it's not actually updating on the website itself, uh, that may be something where you need to report that over to the product support team. And they can also look into that from there as well. So, oh, and a question from Jillian. Uh, sorry, I'm lost. How did you get to this page? Uh, so what I did, Jillian, I went into the page manager. So you went to website and then pages. And what I did, I actually went and clicked to add a new page. So I'm building my own page in this case. Uh, there's a little button in the upper right corner of that page manager where you can click to add a new page. And then we're just in the editor section right now. We're actually just building that page right now. So, All right. So again, yeah, I'm going to go and actually tell this that, that I want that link to open in a new window. I'm going to save this right now. And you see that this is actually a different color now because this is actually a link rather than just raw text. So now that we've actually added that bit of content, I'm just going to save. So we have a very, very simple page built at this point. We have a hero image, we have a title, we have a description, and then we have a little bit of text right down here, which the first part of that text is actually a link. So, so let's look at what this looks like on, on the live website. I'm just gonna click the full preview. So essentially this is what a consumer would see if they landed on this page, with the exception that there, there would be a little bar up here that would have our profile information and a menu button. 
But right here, you can see that we have the image, we have that text right here. Uh, this is actually a link right here. So you notice when we mouse over it, it comes up with that little, that little title box. And if we click on that, it brings us right over to that page that we just linked to on that moving company's website. So that's essentially how you go and build a page and add links to other pages from your website. So the last thing that we need to do now that we've actually built this page for our website, we need to give people a way to go and find this page on our website. We need to add a menu item that people can use to get to that, that page on our website. So let me just close off a couple of these extra tabs here. Close off Bouge. Okay, so now let's go back and we'll click exit. So we have our local suppliers page right here. And what we need to do now is we need to give people a way to get to that. So we're gonna go into the website here. We're gonna go this time into navigation. So if we go into navigation, you'll see that this actually is what the navigation looks like for our website. There's a little menu button in the upper right corner of the website. And this is what people would find if they click on that. So you can see there's a, a buyer section, there's a seller section, there's a resources section, there's my info, there's Canada. So some of these are the default. Some of the th these are that things that uh, probably Noel or I have added over the last few weeks while we've been doing these training sessions. But what I wanna do is I wanna add a local suppliers link so people can get to that local suppliers page that I've just built. And you'll see that right over here, we have all of those different pages, including the local suppliers. So if we wanna add this local suppliers page to the navigation now, we just have to click and drag. We can say we wanna put this in, let's say we wanna put this in the Remax Canada section and it makes it kind of a sub item of that Remax Canada menu. Or if we want, we can also click and drag that and just make it its own menu item altogether. So we just drag it right down here. You can see it's not, not being indented, indicating that it's a sub item, it's actually its own menu item. So now that that's there, if I go back to the, the website, let's go back to the dashboard here and just view the website, you can see this is what our website looks like at this point. And in the upper right corner, if we click that little menu button, these are the, the ones that are actually kind of bolded. These are the main items. And then these are sub items of each menu item. And as we scroll down, just have to click accept there. Oh, we're not seeing that one. Let me just go back in here. The navigation, I'm just gonna put local suppliers in, let's say put it under one of these ones right here. Actually resources, let's put it under resources right there. Okay, so let's go back to the website. We'll refresh the page. I can go into the menu. Oh, and yeah, no, we are, we're having some sort of an issue there. It's not taking the navigation for some reason. Uh, I did mention we are having an issue with one of our, our vendors today, one of our, our uh, servers. So that could be causing that. Uh, but essentially what you would normally find after you've added this as a menu item, it would show right here and somebody could then click on that to get over to, to that page essentially. So, Oh, and a, another question from Jeleen, I can't find editor section. So, so the editor, let's just go back in here. Let's go back to website and then pages. So to get the, to the editor, you have to go and actually edit a specific page. So if I were to go in right here and click this edit button, it would bring me into the block editor. And that's where you can start adding and removing blocks for that specific section of, of that specific page. So, okay, and I see a question at a rank agent did not connect says purchase integration. Okay, so that, so Corey, that, that sounds like there may be an issue there. Uh, you shouldn't really have to purchase anything for integration. So that, that's something where you would want to reach out to the product support team. They'd be able to look into what's causing that. There could just be maybe a mismatch between your account name in our system and your account name in, in the rank major system. Uh, but that, that's something they can definitely look into for you. Okay. Uh, I mean, are you able to edit the search bar by rent sale, buy sell? Uh, at this point, you can't edit that search bar. So this is kind of what you're referring to right here. Uh, unfortunately, you can't edit that, but we have had some feedback from people that, that they might want to have this rent removed. Uh, so that's something that the team is looking into possibly removing or possibly even just giving a toggle so that people can turn that on or off. Uh, but that is something they are working on right now. Uh, that's a good call out though. So, so thanks. Thank you very much for that. So, all right. 
So uh, the last thing I did want to show you guys today is I want to show you that you do have the ability to go in and add integrations with things like Google Analytics and Facebook tracking pixels. We have some integration built into the Boost platform for that. So I'm going to show you where you can go and actually add that to the system. Uh, so to add anything like that, uh, for anybody who's not familiar with Google Analytics, that's a platform for basically doing, uh, getting tracking statistics for your website. So let you know when people come on your website, where, how, what page they land on your, on your website, uh, how long they're on specific pages. So it gives you lots and lots of really useful information. Uh, for anybody that's not using Google Analytics, it's something that you can actually use for free. Uh, up to, I believe it's 10 million visits. So you can use that for free on your website. You can sign up for free with Google Analytics and you just basically just Google Google Analytics to be able to get to the, the site where you can go and sign up for that. And once you signed up for that, you're gonna get a little bit of tracking code that you can then load into your website, including into your Boosh website so that Pete, so it can start tracking any traffic that lands on your website. So very, very useful. Uh, we use it for remax.ca and it gives us a huge amount of, of really good information about what people are coming to the website, where they're coming from, how long they're landing on specific pages and sitting on that page for. So it's a really, really good tool. Uh, so I wanna show you where you can add that if you are signed up for Google Analytics or if you're not signed up for it and you wanna sign up for it, uh, this would be the process you use to get that connected into your Google website. So to do that, let's just go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think there's some construction going on in the building. There's a, a little bit of noise in the background here. So. so to get in to add your Google Analytics or your Facebook tracking pixel, if you just click your little profile bubble in the upper right corner of the page and click on settings, and then right over here, you go to settings page and it's gonna be right here. Uh, it's under systems. Yeah, it's under systems. And then right here, there's a third party scripts. So this is where you can go in. If you're using Facebook tracking pixels and you wanna add that to your website, you can activate this right here. If you just click the activate button, it will let you actually go in and, and connect to your Facebook account. And then right here, you basically just have to put in the pixel tracking code to be able to have that, that be added to your website. Uh, for anybody that's not sure on that, that's something I should be able to send you some directions on as well. So uh, if you want, put something into the chat box and, and I can send you some directions after the, after the webinar for how to find that in your Facebook account. Uh, very similar with Google Analytics as well. If you click this activate button for Google Analytics, it's basically just looking for the Google Analytics tracking ID code. So that's something that when you sign up for Google Analytics, uh, it'll take you through the steps of setting up that, that tracking uh, code. And the last step, it'll actually give you a unique code that's unique to your account. Uh, and really, you just basically have to kind of copy that code. And this is kind of the format of what that code looks like right here. So you just copy that code and then paste that in right here. And then once you added that to your account, once you click continue, uh, it allows for anybody, anytime somebody lands on your website, on any page of your website, it sends a little bit of information to Google, letting them know that that, that, that event happened. And then you can start kind of building up your, your tracking stats in your Google Analytics account for how many people are visiting your website and what they're doing on your website, essentially. So, so very, very useful, uh, really good, lots of information with that. Uh, and, and especially for being a free tool, it's, it's definitely something we recommend that people use. So, all right. Well, that is about all I have for you guys for today. Uh, if anybody happens to have any other questions uh, that we haven't kind of covered in the session, uh, feel free to put them into the chat box and I can try and answer a few more questions before we close off for the day. And while I'm waiting for those to come in, I'm going to put our contact information back up on the screen. So again, uh, if you're having issues, uh, especially things like, like what you just noticed where it's asking you to purchase integration for Google, for Rank My Agent, uh, that's the type of thing you really would want to report over to the product support team so they can look into that and get that sorted out for you. So you can definitely, again, reach out to them using the support services tile within your Mac Center account, or you can reach out to them by phone or by text at the number that you see on your screen right there. Uh, and then the last option is to e email them and you can actually email them at product support at remax.net. So. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Hopefully that means everything was, was fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, if you, again, if you have questions, feel free to, uh, to reach out to the product support team. They're there to help you guys out. Oh, and I see a question from Constance. Uh, change the landing page image and the four that I've chosen do not scroll the way the demo did help. Okay, so that, that could be, 
part of the issue we're having with with our our uh our server right now uh that is probably something you would want to re reach out to the product support team on in this case connie so all right well thank you everybody for taking the time to sign in today um hopefully you got some useful information out of that again if you have questions reach out to product support they're, they're there to help you guys out and we want to make sure that you guys can make use of this platform that we've developed for you over the last couple of years so thanks everybody and everybody have a great day bye